from America's finest city. This is Real Talk San Diego on ESPN 1700. What's happening, gang? You are live back for our second hour of The Secret Stash, tracking down some cool local people. Maybe talking about some important local stuff. Who knows? Maybe even grabbing a story with the singular goal of leaving you better than how we found you. I'm your co-host, Jesse Abanez, flanked by my home slice, Jennifer Root. Good morning, San Diego. This is Jennifer Root here. Excited to have our guests here today. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, let's introduce them. So we actually got a, a really cool panel. We wanted to kind of put a frame around this today. We thought that the conversation needed to be had around the, the, like the future of design and sustainability. Does that sound coiny, Jen? Does that kind of work with you, right? Yeah, well, I mean, there's all these buzzwords that we throw around nowadays. Sustainability, going green, renewable energy. We, all, we hear them every day. That's why we got also Jen Root, by the way, Jen Root, publisher of Del Mar Lifestyle in the House. And let me begin, slide over to your right there and introduce our man, Rick Davey. Rick, Rick, say hi to your fans. Hey, hello, San Diego. It's a real pleasure to be here. Jesse, Jen, thank you so much for this opportunity. You bet. Rick, holding the down from Davey Architecture. You can, by the way, you can check him out at Davey, D-A-V-Y, architecture.com. Flanked also by another very important uh, contributor to this conversation of sustainability, all things green. Who knows? Who knows what else might come up from you two over there? But also Andrew Watt and Harrison Reed of Sunrun over in sunrun.com. I know your fans were lined up around the building, so perhaps you can introduce yourselves <laughs> to the folks who never met you before. Harrison Reed here, working for Sunrun, a residential solar consultant, and I couldn't be happier to be here on the show today and telling you guys about you know sustainability and enjoying the conversation. Andrew? I'm Andrew Watt. Looking forward to our conversation in the next hour and educating a little bit people more about um, solar, not just solar, but being green and living green. Yeah, mm. so excited to have you guys on. Thank you so much. I wanted to open up conversation now and ask you guys a question. We hear these buzzwords, sustainability, green energy. I wanted to know what they mean for you personally, professionally, and what you think the future of San Diego, uh, what the future holds really for these topics. Um, Rick? Well, it's important to know that we are moving towards a net zero energy world. Uh, the goal yeah. is that by 2020 for residential, I believe, in 2030 here in the state of California, commercial buildings will all be net zero energy. That means they don't consume any more energy than they generate. Um, so the fellow sitting to my right here in the, in the solar uh, electric business uh, can speak to that. Um, I read an interesting book recently by... Um, Alvin Toffler of the Rocky Mountain Institute. It was called Reinventing Fire. So, Ooh, so just to throw this out on the that's table. That's a beautiful title. Yes. Let's let's move forward to 2050 and let's imagine a San Diego. Oh, I where, like this. I like this. Steve, you should like sprinkle in some theme music right now, like some dum, space dum, thought. Dum, yeah. dum, 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 dum. There we go. Okay, so what? So, where we have no coal. Yep. This Ooh. is a world with no coal, a world with like no oil. Imagine that, yeah. a world with no oil and a world with no nuke energy, and we just shut down a big plant, right, just up the coast. Now, now, real quick point of clarity. When you say none, you mean that the resources are exhausted or that we just don't need them anymore? We won't be using them anymore. Right, that's what I Because thought. they're all fossil fuel-based, except for the nukes, and they have other environmental problems, of course. Yeah. Um, so we're going to be into a very, very green world. Um, and gas is a choice. And, of course, in, anybody who reads the news understands that we've discovered fracking yeah. and we can now uh, make cheap gas. And it is a relatively clean fuel. So our future will be gas and it'll be what Andrew um, and Harrison to my right here do for a living. And the jury will be hung on the impact of all that stuff, I'm sure, in the years to come. But, gentlemen, you guys, I mean, we got you in the house here today to talk about the part that you have mastery around. So, I mean, w w weigh in on this from your perspective. Well, what I can tell you is that the way that we've currently have been buying power and the way we traditionally think about it, it, it can change. We, we, can, we can challenge that, that thought and that notion. And to think that we can harness enough energy within the sun to power our homes and power our lives is unbelievable. It, it's a huge impact, and it's something that I'm passionate about and excited to discuss today. Or it should be actually believable in the sense that they've been doing this now for about, what, four decades? A long time. I remember my parents had the first generation of solar panels on their house. Now, granted, I'm sure they stunk. They probably <laughs> couldn't even power a small toy at that point in time. But it's been around for a hot minute, pardon the pun. Absolutely, right? Um, how are we powering our satellites in space? 
It, it's with solar, and, and we can do the same thing. You talked about your parents, yeah. right? The old technology, that's the typical question that we get. The end result is power, yeah. to power our homes. We use it every day, and you have a choice. So the law of ubiquity finally bringing it down to the street level. So so where do you see, uh, Harrison, Like, do you think we're going to be off the grid, so to speak, at a specific point in time? Well, 2050, as uh, Rick over here was mentioning, that's going to be, you know, who knows what's going to happen then. But we would certainly like to think so. Um, You know, coming back to the resources we're using, they're finite resources. They're not going to be around forever. We're going through these at a startling rate. And, you know, talk about the solar, talk about the sun. It's been coming, rising and setting for 4.5 billion years. (laughs) Oh, you you get a point for it. Oh, right I like there. that. There That's we go. Key. Right I got one. I yeah. got one. Dropping sun in there. And, sun and, stats. And we can only hope that it's going to continue to do that for a few more billion years. And we're going to, you know, reap the benefits of that. And yeah. we're going to finally give, uh, you know, homeowners a chance and, and a choice to to choose where their power's coming from. And, and that's a big part of what Sunrun's doing here with our solar panels. Right. Absolutely. And, you know, touching back on Rick mentioning that gas is a choice, when we have all of these resources available to us, how do we utilize these resources and make an, a powerful impact on the earth in which we live and not leave any footprint behind? So I wanted to um, turn over the discussion to that now as far as, um, you know, how do we do our part here and not leave, um, not leave waste behind? Man, Rick, this is a so, volleyball lob for you, man. Oh, my gosh. How do we do our part? Um, First of all, it's just it's it's having a respect for others that, you know, what I do influences the people in my community. I grew up in L.A. where you could see the air. (laughs) So we we, you know, we can debate about um, uh, uh, climate change and what the cause of it is. But we also know that we burn too many fossil fuels and we can't breathe. You know, just ask the Chinese who have to wear face masks just to walk around town. So. Every one of us really uh, needs to contribute to the solution, you know, just incrementally uh, simple things like um, turning the lights off, using less energy, being responsible. Um, oh, let me give you a mind bender, by the way. Ooh, ooh we like this. I love mind benders. Yeah. Okay, because yeah, this away. is off a yeah. little off topic, but yeah. this will blow your mind. I'm still in 2025 20, or wherever you left me, so oh, this okay. is perfect. <laughs> this will blow your mind. We're not running out of water. We, we don't have a water supply problem. We have a water storage and, and transportation problem. Mm. Okay, now that's interesting. So now all of our water is sourced, as far as I know, from the Colorado River. Is that correct? Um, the Colorado River and the, and the Sacramento Delta. Right. And now 8% will come from the new plant that's just finishing construction, the Poseidon plant in Carlsbad. The de Sacramento sal, de sal plant. The Sacramento, that's more for the farmer side. That gets soaked up by the time it gets down through the San Joaquin. We right? still get, I think, some portion yeah. of that. But, but the fact of the matter is, if you look at the world, the globe, um, it's impossible to run out of water. All we ever do globally is we recycle it. Mm-hmm. So, right. so raise all your children to be civil engineers because they're going to have a lot of business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no lie. Gentlemen? <clears throat> well, I got something to say back on the talking about the coal um, and Jesse, I think I might get another point for these some of these uh-oh, factual uh-oh. information here. <laughs> well, not if you call uh-oh. your shot. I know. You know what? I'm overconfident, <laughs> overconfident in this one. But I was, you know, doing, giving them some facts on Google about some of the finite resources. And there's there's 600 coal plants in the U.S. alone. And they did a statistic in an average four-person home, you know, how much CO2 is being being omitted. And per day, it equivalents to I think something like 19 million, 360. A thousand balloons filled with CO2 that's getting omitted every day just based on those coal plants. And on top of that is the waste, and it equivalents to 2,470 rail cards uh, of coal waste, and that's per day. And so uh, there we go, you know, and we want to eliminate that. We want to get away from that. It's it's the finite resources. It's not bettering our planet and, uh, you know, come around. That's what we want to do. You know, that's a big thing we're doing with solar. Yeah, and, and we could have an entire whole nother segment if we're going to talk about global warming, which we won't at this point. But it, it's undeniable that we need to continue and focus and improve air quality and make the world a better place for our future generations. I have a couple of kids myself, and I, I care about that passionately. So no matter what side you're on the fence there, we can all make an impact, and that's really important. Andrew, the pump is now officially primed, I think. 
we have Real Talk radioed the pants off of this for roundtable style. So let me do this and say coming up, Rick Davey from Davey Architecture is going to drop some knowledge right now. <laughs> My man, I, as if he hasn't already. So you know what's coming up uh, about what urban or ur, ur, urbanity, ur, urbanity, uh, the future of San Diego. You mean architecturally and all yeah, that sort of bet. business? Yeah, you bet. More yeah. density, more exciting. How we can maybe think more like San Francisco? Yeah, and talking and, about working within the community, and, right? And maybe more like Amsterdam. Ooh, because we have a we have a rising sea level problem. That's a fantastic tease, <laughs> right there, gang. So as you can see, stick around. A little more real talk radio, San Diego. Or if you're feeling frisky, you can follow us on uh, Twitter at Follow the Stash and maybe even ask a question live. Who knows? You might even ask it for this gang. Real Talk Radio. We'll be right back. 